two star pitchers. <laughs> we have some studs just to tell you about. You don't need to worry about starting or sitting these guys, assuming you'll be starting them. Adam Wainwright, Jake Peavy, Cole Hamels, John Lester, Matt Garza. John Lester, two-star guy for you, Scott, in our podcast league. He needs to do a little better than he did uh, in start one. Yeah, the one the one time, I think, in all my drafts this offseason, I went earlier than round seven picking a starting pitcher. <laughs> That's what he delivers so far. All right, so here are some guys that might be available in your league and have two starts coming up. Carl Pavano, he has Boston and Kansas City at home. Uh, we are interested to see what that new Twins ballpark is going to look like, and we're going to find out. And Carl Pavano will be on the mound. What do you guys think about Carl Pavano? He's a questionable option. Um, in deeper leagues, I think you can trust him. Okay. I, I would probably – it would have to be a deep mix league but, uh, for me to trust him. I know his start, yeah. his start uh, was outstanding, but uh, when you got that Boston matchup, it's a little difficult. I, I'm looking over all these names. I feel like I'm going to end up saying that on all of them, just deeper league guys. I wouldn't – I wouldn't want to trust one of the guys I drafted even even in the middle rounds like a like a one star Gavin Floyd I'd trust over any of these guys. But let's get to them. All right, well, the next two were Ian Kennedy and Justin Dukeshire, but we already touched I'm on that. I love Ian him. Kennedy. John Maine. I cut this man. I'm not happy with him. He stinks. <laughs> at Colorado and at St. Louis. I call him high risk. I, I like how you spelled out Saint Louis <laughs> here in the notes. S A I N T. Uh, I've never seen that. Yeah, I wouldn't well, touch John. Maine. I work in the in the college division here at CBS, and you've got like uh, a, a bunch of schools that some Saint some they're Joseph. ST, some they're SAINT. So you know, I just I st- I, I tell a lot of stupid stories, but that was about the dumbest story. You've well, it would have been told. great if you didn't interrupt me. <laughs> it had a really good punchline, but then I totally lost it because you started talking over me. Barry Zito, Emac, you were high on him. He's a two star guy. Pittsburgh and at the Dodgers. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep riding. Uh, go against those guys pitching against Pittsburgh. Right. It backfired on me uh, with in week one. Vicente Badia, but yeah. um, you know. Let's, let's give Zito a try. He looked great. Maybe this is his I, year he comes back and looks like a 15-game winner again. He, he showed some improvement over the course of last season, and his first start was decent. I think he went six innings, struck out like six. So I would be more inclined to go with him than probably any of these other guys here. Notoriously a slow right. starter. If he gets off to a good start, um, maybe he can have uh, one of his better years in year, his years past. How about fast? Oh, Sorry, go ahead. No, this guy's interesting, too. Oh, yeah, Fausto Carmona. I know you, you didn't like the walks. Yeah. He's got Texas and the White Sox both at home. Yeah, and those are kind of tough matchups. But w- it, it was good to see. He allowed only one hit in that first start, which is obviously a good sign. The thing I worry about with him, though, is like you said, those six walks, it, it wasn't so much the hit ability that held him back the last two years, but the high walk rate, which he looked like he overcame this spring, but then it was right back there. I'm not ready to cut him loose or anything, but he's still a pretty iffy start, I think. A Mike Leak like start to open the season. Uh, absolutely. And I'm I'm trusting Leak, so in deeper leagues I'll trust Carmona. Ross Olendorf at the Giants and home against Cincinnati. This, this is a guy I liked as a really deep sleeper because you know, doesn't have knockout stuff and pitches for the Pirates. Those are two strikes against him. But he's, he had an ERA under three in the second half last year, which does deserve some attention. Uh, so certainly, in 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 a deep league, like let's say sixteen plus teams, uh, I would definitely consider using him. All right, let me throw out one more since we talked about Kennedy and. Dukeshire in the other. Uh, let me segment. rip through some two start notes uh, after. All right, after then you, you go finish. ahead. You know what? Go nuts. I don't, I don't want to own it. No, no, no. I mean, I'm All sure right, you'll well, cover I'm, what I'm I was going at, to cover. I'm looking at uh, some pitching, uh, uh, you know, favorable pitching matchups. The White Sox with Toronto and Cleveland, the Tigers with Kansas City and Seattle, and then, like I said, with Oakland A's and Justin Dukeshire, Seattle, Baltimore. Um, that maybe, uh, maybe a sleeper for the Tigers, Dontrell Willis, sleeper for the White Sox, Freddie Garcia. Um, th- their matchups are favorable. And then uh, we got Kennedy and Leak, like I said. Hiroki Kuroda, I think, is undervalued. He's got a decent matchup. Nick Blackburn, Phil Hughes makes his first start against the Angels and Casimir. I think Hughes is going to pitch well consistently this year. Uh, I know you as a Yankee fan might be a little uh, uh, skeptical because Yankees skeptical. hate hate pitchers that aren't proven, but Hughes is going to be good this year. Kyle Kendrick was bad in his first start, but his matchup is good in week two. He's got um, some potential to help people. Jaime Garcia, I think, is one of the more under-owned starting pitchers in baseball. Dave Duncan can work with projects like no other pitching guru. 
He's Jaime not Gar- really a project, though. He's a Jaime Garcia prospect. is a prospect coming off of Tommy John surgery. Undervalued, underowned, solid first start. I think he's going to be a consistent guy. You can pick him up in mixed leagues and trust him this week yeah. with a good matchup. Uh, Sean Markham has been outstanding. I think he's a must start in all leagues now. Ricky Romero had a good first start, and I think his matchup is uh, uh, pretty decent. One guy I want to just kind of highlight in there, Dontrell Willis wasn't terrible in his first start. <laughs> Look who That's said that in spring training. And you, I, oh, you wow. were against terrible. Him. He'll be he terrible. Might. I'm convinced. He, no, it, Not terrible no in terms of like I got him as a last pick in a 12-team uh, AL only in round 30. Well, yeah, in the no, reserve that's great. Dra- exactly. Yeah, so, good for you. So everybody yeah. hates him. Would you have taken him in a 12-team mixed head No, head? I got to say it because you guys were poo-pooing him, and he's going to be productive. Uh, well, I, I think And his matchups are good this week. So. I am rooting for him because I like him, but I'm, I'm skeptical. I think you take one aspect of the conversation and just remember that one <laughs> little aspect and then beat it to death over the course of the season. Makes me right and you wrong. <laughs> I guess I, I so. Think, I think we definitely said Dontrell Willis, uh, based on his spring performance, was worth watching, but we weren't. If anyone was critical, it was me. Him. Don't pick on him. Pick on me. All right. Oh, I will. All right, good. 